Hi guys, this is Louis Oldsalzen from ChessFox.com and in this video I'm going to show you an endgame study where two bishops trap a rook. It's White's turn to move and so if you want to try solve this for yourself you can pause the video to think a bit about it. However, it's quite tricky. It starts with the move bishop to g3 check and this essentially forces the king to go to c8 because if it goes to a8 then after bishop to g2 check Black is forced to play rook to b7 and then bishop takes b7 is checkmate. So this proves why black is forced to go to c8. And now white has the move bishop to a6 check. Bishop to h3 pins the rook but remember it's not good enough to trade the bishop for the rook. We need to win the rook else we won't be able to checkmate the black king if we had to give up one of the bishops. We need both bishops to be able to checkmate the king. And so after bishop to a6 check, black is forced to go with the king to d8. Of course, if the rook goes to, to b7, we will simply capture the rook. So after king to d8, white plays the bishop to h4 check. And now black has two options. He can either play the king to e8 or he can play the rook to e7. In both cases, white has a very nice idea. If he plays the king to e8, then after bishop to b5, black is in Zichuang. The rook can't move, and if the king moves, he can only go to either f8 or f7, then we get the rook. On the other hand, if black blocks with the rook, of course we can't capture the rook, else black will play king takes bishop and we'll only have one bishop left. But white now has the nice move bishop to b5, putting black in Zichuang again. Since the rook can't move, the king has to move. The only move for the king is king to c8 and now white can capture the rook and then use the two bishops to eventually force a checkmate. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.